and welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm your host for the show today. And uh, I'm going to be starting uh, a, a series on uh, candidates running for elected office who have condos in their district. And the reason I'm, I'm doing a, a series like this is because I've heard, you know, so many people grumble to me saying, how come, how come we have this law and what can we do about it? Or how come we can't get this law passed? And, you know, my, 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 my recommendation to them is you got to get to know your elected officials. You got to know, to, you got to get to know your candidates. Uh, and, and you, you got to become their best friend so that when you pick up the phone and say, you know, Mr. So-and-so, you know, I'm a constituent and I vote, they're going to listen to you. And so we're going to, we're going to be doing a series of, of condo insiders. And I'm going to have as my guests, uh, candidates who are running for, uh, elected office and they have condos in their in district. And we're going to be talking about issues relating to condos and hopefully, uh, you will uh, invite these people into your communities and uh, get to know them. And, uh, and like I said, if you want things done, you want to become their best friend. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Ron Manor. Hi, Ron. Hello, Jane. And I, see you I, again. <laughs> yeah, and I, disclaimer, I've known Ron Manor for what, over 20, is it over 20 years? That's correct. Yeah, and, and, I consider you one of my best friends too. So that's why I support condo issues. <laughs> so why don't we tell our viewers how we know each other? Well, we go back a ways, don't we? But I'm not yeah. going to specify the years because it's going to reveal, make me feel too old. But, you know, before serving on the city council, I served for many years in, in the state legislature. More specifically, I chaired the Senate and House Consumer Protection Committees. And way back then, Jane, you always impressed me with your energy and commitment to representing and advocating for the needs of condominiums. And it was in your capacity as an advocate that the two of us worked together to, uh, on measures to improve our state condominium laws. So uh, we go back a ways. And of course, when I served on the city council, we continued working on condo issues. And so it's good to see you again and look forward, forward to dialoguing with you this afternoon or today. Right, and I can remember some of those things and, and we had some very contentious issues, especially with foreclosures and we were fighting with the lenders about in a foreclosure, you know, who gets the money. And, and, and I have to say, uh, you know, we didn't always agree, but you always gave us a fair shake. And, you know, that's what counts. And, you know, so that's what I want to share with my viewers today is that, you know, you and I, we have this relationship and, you know, it started off because, you know, we would come and testify before you as a legislator and, and you, you, you know, you got to know what our issues were and you asked us hard questions. And I can remember you telling us, hey, you guys go outside in the hallway, you figure it out, you come back and let me know what you want to do. And I will, I will, I will get that, you know. I will work with you to make sure that that happens. And, and, you know, a lot of times that's what we did. We went out in the hallway and we kind of beat each other up and we would come back. And, you know, cause we knew if we didn't go back with an agreement that we weren't going to get anything. So it's better to get half, half of an agreement, you know, than nothing at all. And so I, I thank you for uh, helping us way back when, and those were issues relating to 514 B and to leasehold Yes. for, for leasehold. And, you know, so those were very hard issues way back then. And, you know, and the issues don't stop. And now you're, you know, you're bringing your experience to the city council. So you're running for what, District 8? That's correct, Council District 8, newly reapportioned Council District 8. Okay, and so, and that would, and what areas would that include? Well, that would include uh, Mililani and Mililani Malka, uh, to, along with other Central and Leeward Oahu communities as part of the, the District 8. So the other communities would include Pearl City, Waipio Gentry, Crestview, Seaview, Waimalu, some of the Pearl Ridge areas, Raw Summit, those communities would be in District 8. Okay, I know, you know, I live in IA, and I just know, you know, from working on, you know, recent issues with the city, like the fire, you know, safety issue, that, you know, coming into our area, you're going to be picking up about 30, 35 you know, condominium associations, and some of them are townhouses. And, and I know that in Miliani, we have uh, uh, townhouse associations and uh, some, you know, some high rise buildings, but you know, so you, you must, you're gonna have about 50 condos in your district. So, so that means you're gonna be representing, a you're gonna have a lot of 
condominium constituents in your area. And I also want to add that I also live and own, I live in a, a townhouse and I own a townhouse. So okay. I, I, I'm very sensitive from a personal standpoint, a personal level with the issues impacting or affecting condominium. Uh, right. Owners. And, you know, I've been, I've been, and, and, you know, over the years I've been, you know, when I've been speaking and I've been asked, asked questions about, you know, um, uh, meeting with elected officials, I keep telling people, you know, you got to be become best friends with your elected officials, with your city council person, with your state legislators, because you never know when you're going to need their help. And I said, and if you're a constituent and they know who you are, and even if they don't know who you are, if you call and say, you know, I'm a constituent, that office is going to help you, you know, because well, number one, they want your vote. They want they don't want you to be mad at them because they want you to vote, you know, for their elected official next election. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I keep telling people, you know, you've got to become best friends with the elected officials so that they know what your issues are and they will be there to help. You don't want to go to them only when you're in trouble or if you're mad. I mean, that just, you know, it, it's not very productive. But anyway, there's a lot of issues uh, that the city council is involved in. And, you know, let me just go through, you know, some of them. I mean, we have the issue of rubbish removal and real property taxes. And, yes. and that's always a bone of contention because with single family homes, they pay for property taxes and they get free rubbish removal. But condominiums, we pay property taxes and we have to pay a private rubbish removal company to remove, you know, to pay for the um, uh, re removal. And, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, condominiums say, hey, that's not fair, you know, and how, how can we fix this? And let me just tell you, years ago when uh, Arnold Morgado, you know, was uh, in the city council for the Pro City IA area, he lived at the Wailuna, which is a townhouse community, and he arranged to get city pickup for the Wailuna, and I found out about it. And I went to him, I said, hey, you know, there are other townhouse communities you know, you got to share the wealth, you know, you got, if you get it for your, your community, you got to get it for the uh, others. And he did offer, and, and there were condominiums uh, in Oahu who were able to get city pickup for maybe, I mean, with condominiums, there's so many people that they have to, you know, get pickup almost every day, but if they could get two or three days, and I think the city does two days, right, for single family homes, if they could get two days, that would reduce the cost of their rubbish removal. And I, I haven't, you know, heard anything recently, but, you know, if you're elected, is this something that you would talk to environmental services about doing? No question. You know, you mentioned the fact that city government deals with critical issues. And there's no question that city government plays a very important role in dealing with the day-to-day -day issues that affect the quality of life for our residents. And in particular, condominium owners. I mean, we've got issues relating to real property taxes, as you mentioned, uh, yeah. police and fire protection, emergency services, building permits, the fire, a safety ordinance that I'm sure we're going to be talking about shortly. And of right. course, uh, trash collection and refuse pickup. Uh, so with respect to trash collection, I just want to start off by saying that I, I'm very sensitive to the concerns that have been expressed by condo owners that while they pay real property taxes, you know, they're not getting the same free uh, trash collection services that are available to other property owners. I, 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 I'm concerned about that. I consider that to be an issue and I'd like to work on that. What you've suggested is a, is a very good uh, proposal. And definitely as a city council member, I'd like to work on a proposal such as that. Um, I just want to bounce something off you. What about as another possibility um, coming, introducing a bill that provides some kind of real property tax relief for condo owners who don't get uh, you know, refuse collection service. That would, I think that would, that would be, you know, very, you know, helpful, you know, and that would be a recognition that, um, that, you know, that there, you know, some kind of uh, uh, equity, you know, yes. uh, you know, trying to make it more equal because, you know, I don't know if you remember, but back when Jeremy Harris was the mayor, he had, you know, and he didn't want to, I mean, this was during a time of inflation or recession or something like that. And he, he did this thing about revenue neutral property taxes. And, and in other words, uh, he wasn't going to raise the taxes, uh, but you know, he was gonna do this revenue neutral thing. And what it ended up is that the real property taxes per, you know, per uh, homeowner went up for condominiums, but not for single family homes. It took us three years you know, of, you know, very 
intensive lobbying to get him to 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 you know change his mind. And then and then it took the city, I think, six years to equalize it because they you know for for three for for the six for that three year period we were paying more taxes you know per per household than a single family home because of that revenue neutral business. So so you know we know not you know whenever I hear something like that or a concept where people are trying to do that revenue neutral thing, as I remind them about what Jeremy Harris did. And it took us a, a while to, you know, straighten that out. Right. And, you know, so, so those kinds of issues are very sensitive, you know, uh, and, and, and people have to understand that, you know, people who live in condominiums, townhouses or high rises, I mean, we're homeowners too, but sometimes we get treated differently from, you know, single family homeowners. Yes. And, and, and sometimes, you know, that becomes, you know, uh, very hurtful and you right. get a lot of resentment, you know, about how come we're different? How come they treat us different? That's correct. So I agree with you. I think that that situation is unfair. Uh, the fact is that uh, when real property taxes are assessed on condo owners, they don't factor in uh, the fact that condo owners are not being provided with trash collection services. Adjustments aren't being made to the property taxes to take that into account. So either we look at adjusting real property tax rates for condo owners to provide some property tax relief, or we go in, in what do, we go with what you suggested, which is providing a, some level of service, trash collection service to condominiums. Okay, uh, you know, but why don't we get to the fire safety I issue? Because in fact, we, we just, we had a, a permitted action group hearing yesterday on the fire sprinkler issue. Let me, for, for background, there, the Marco Polo fire happened in July of 2017. And then uh, in 2018, uh, I don't know who introduced it, but it was the mayor's, it was the administration bill. Uh, Kirk Caldwell introduced a mandate for fire sprinklers in all high rise buildings. And the city council, uh, and, and, and you were very instrumental in setting up the, the, the task force. The you know uh, and I and and I was a member of the task force, along uh, with you know there were engineers and different city agencies and the real estate commission, and you know so we were given a seat at the table so to speak, and so we were able to modify the ordinance to say well it's not a straight mandatory you shall and every building shall have fire sprinklers. We were given, we asked for an alternative and the alternative that everybody agreed on was a life safety valuation. In other words, if you don't do this uh, fire sprinklers, you have to pass this life safety valuation and do the repairs and do whatever you have to do uh, to make the building safer. And then you don't have to do the sprinklers. And, and at that time, you know, it was, it, you know, we, um, uh, it was something brand new. And, and we were told that Chicago had a similar law, but, you know, there was no big push to do the, you know, enforcement. Now that in Honolulu, they're starting to do the enforcement, a lot of buildings are coming forward in, and including the design professionals who are doing the life safety evaluation, they're coming forward. And, we, and, and, and the consensus that we reached at you know at the at the pig meeting yesterday there's not enough time you have 300 over 300 buildings in Honolulu it took the Marco Polo 4 years to put in their fire sprinklers and in the 3 years since the bill has been in effect the fire department has reported about 210 buildings have finished their life safety valuation. Of the 210 approximate buildings that have finished, only 12 have gotten past these scores. Okay? So anybody can do the math. You, you know, you, you, you've got, and there's 143 buildings who haven't even done the life safety valuation. And do you know what we found out in the pig meeting? From, and there were, uh, there was um, the, uh, representatives from Hawaiiana Management and Associa and Touchstone, they reported that they the, some of their associations think that the law is going to be repealed. They think the law is going to be repealed because there have been changes. And yes, 
there have been changes because we've gone to the council and said, hey, we, there, we need more time, right? First of all, the pandemic hit. Who knew, I mean, the law was passed before the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and nobody could even get access to the building to do the life safety evaluation. So there was no way the original deadline, the three-year deadline would have been 2020. And we couldn't, because of, the, because of the pandemic, they had to extend it. And they had to extend some other deadlines and there were some changes made. And so what we heard from the association you know, management people, oh, our, our associations, they think there's gonna be repeal. And my answer to that is, really? Are they talking to their council members? Are the council members, are their phones ringing off the hook? Because if it's not, it's not gonna happen. And that's the, the purpose of my show today is if, they, if people want to repeal this law, they're gonna to have to talk to their candidates and see if their candidates wanna repeal the law. And if enough people, I guess, step up and say, hey, this is not working, uh, it's too expensive, I need more time, and we gotta fix our pipes. You know, our pipes, the building is old. We, need, we, have, we have money for spalling. We, have to, we, have, we need $20 million to replace all of our pipes. And now we get hit with fire sprinklers. So, you know, uh, so, so a lot of issues came up. And so, you know, this is something that, you know, you, you, I think you're going to have to deal with as a candidate. And so, you know, people are going to ask you, well, if, you know, what are you going to do about it? Right. Now, I'm glad you raised the issue. It's a critical issue. It's like an issue that we worked on previously, as you mentioned, when I was on the council. So thank you for allowing me to share my perspectives. Well, anyway, as, as you indicated, you know, the, the council, when I was a member of the council, worked together with you and other stakeholders in the development and crafting of the, our fire safety ordinance or ordinance 19-4. And you know, the intent behind the ordinance was to try to uh, balance the goal of improved fire safety with the clear need to mitigate the costs of retro retrofitting condominium buildings on condo owners. Yeah. And I was very, very concerned about the uh, potential cost impact on condominium owners because I knew that the, the costs of uh, installing fire safety equipment and fire sprinkler systems can be hugely expensive. And in enacting uh, Ordinance 19-4, uh, council members, including myself, our intent was that the implementation of the law needed to be closely monitored and if this law resulted in negative impacts and consequences, then the council needed to reevaluate the law and make any necessary amendments. Well, as you've indicated, based on your discussion with the pig and the discussions that you've had with, uh, with other stakeholders over the past uh, few months, um, the implementation of, law, of the law has resulted in negative impacts and unintended consequences. You've already pointed out that a large, significant number of condo owner condominiums have been unable to pass the uh, life uh, safety evaluations required under the law. And, uh, and they face, these condominiums face significant obstacles. They will face significant obstacles in trying to uh, install the necessary uh, fire sa uh, safety equipment and fire si si uh, sprinkler systems by the applicable compliance deadlines. You know, for example, a large number of, bil of condo buildings are gonna to have to obtain building permits. And as we know, applicants for building yes. permits have encountered significant delays in the Department of Planning and Permitting. Right. Over, you mentioned the pandemic. Well, uh, condominiums are, are going to uh, possibly be negatively impacted by supply chain and labor market issues that will drive up the costs of the equipment and supplies and make it more difficult for condominiums to be able to obtain them. And I've also heard complaints that the law has been applied unevenly. And furthermore, um, an unintended consequence is that insurance costs have been going way up. Yes. Because of the enactment of our fire safety ordinance. So given these concerns, uh, I am willing, if I'm elected to the council, uh, I am willing to introduce a bill to enact whatever amendments are necessary Okay, to address these concerns, including extending the compliance deadlines. And if, if, the, if additional amendments don't work and, and the law proves to be unfeasible and impractical, then yeah, I mean, the council should consider uh, possibly repealing the law. 
Um, I also know that there's another bill that's being considered uh, by the council at present to address these concerns, Bill 44, which would establish a fund to provide funds to AOAOs to help them pay for the costs of, of retrofitting their apartment buildings. And it's my understanding that other jurisdictions have established similar programs to provide financial assistance to condominiums in the form of grants uh, or low cost loans. So uh, I, I also know that uh, the budget committee held a hearing on Bill 44 last Wednesday mm -hmm. and decided to postpone decision-making. I'm hoping that the council will approve Bill 44 this year, but if it does not, then I am prepared to support uh, Bill 44 as a member of the council in 2023. And then finally, you mentioned the permitted interaction group that was established, created by the city council. Very important group, and you've been a member of that. You've contributed a lot of great things to that committee in terms of your ideas, insights, and proposals. Um, and so I know that you are continuing your dialogue and discussions about ways to evaluate and uh, improve the law. And as a council member, I would be very supportive of continuing that process. So uh, we've worked together over the many years on condo issues. And this is one of the issues that I'd like to continue to work together with you and other representatives of the condominium associations to try to come up with solutions. Well, that's good to hear. Thank you so much. But you know, the one of the unintended consequences, you mentioned insurance. And, uh, and, and in fact, we are gonna be meeting with the insurance commissioner at uh, Aaron Johansson, the state you know, legislator who does, he's head of consumer protection. Uh, we went to him with our concern and he's setting up a meeting with the insurance commissioner and CAI will be involved as long as, uh, as well as Hawaii council and Sue Savio will be there. And we've invited uh, other condominium stakeholders, but what's happening is the insurance companies are raising the insurance if for buildings who don't have sprinklers. And to give you an example, my building is 23 stories, 300 units. The insurance went up 30%, $44,000 in 2022. And under the fire safety ordinance, the, the ordinance expressly states that buildings under 10 stories and who have open exterior corridors are exempt from putting in fire sprinklers, except I know two buildings in Waikiki who have open exterior corridors and their insurance went up because they have no sprinklers. But the ordinance expressly exempts them from doing, you know, so, so that's why we're meeting with the insurance commissioner to find out why is this happening? And how come you have an ordinance that says you don't have to do it, and but an insurance, you know, the co companies can come in and say, hey, you don't have a sprinkler. We don't care what the ordinance says. You're gonna, your insurance is gonna go up. And it's happening. It's happening all around Oahu, 2022. Everybody's insurance is going up if you don't have a sprinkler. I see. That's a concern. And uh, we, we need to address that. It's an unintended yeah. consequence. Yeah, and it is not an unintended consequence because, you know, um, I think if everybody, if we all knew that on the task force, we might have done things differently. And it just doesn't make sense and it doesn't seem fair if you've got an ordinance that exempts certain buildings from putting in the fire sprinklers, but then you have the insurance company coming and say, hey, we don't care what the ordinance says, your insurance is going up because you don't have a fire sprinkler. And, and, you know, so, so they're caught between a rock and a hard spot, basically. And well, you're concerned about the status of Bill, Bill 44, you know, are you hopeful that it will get passed this year? Well, I think, uh, I think there, in fact, in, in fact, at that meeting, we brought up the, the meeting with the insurance commissioner and uh, the chair of the budget committee, uh, Calvin Say, asked that he and Carol Fukunaga, council member Carol Fukunaga be included on the call. So I've included, I've, I've notified uh, representative uh, Johansson to include them in the call with the insurance commissioner. So, right. you know, so they will be involved you know, because they're also very concerned. I mean, in fact, it, uh, uh, I, have a, I have a chart of the um, uh, council districts and the number of buildings that are affected and Council member Say's district has 220 structures that are affected by the ordinance. 
So he is very, very concerned. And Carol, Council Member Carol Fukunaga, she's got 176 structures that are subject to the ordinance. And, you know, so, so you know, it's, I mean, condominiums make up a, a good part of the, you know, the um, uh, housing, uh, you know, uh, inventory on, on the island of Oahu. So there's a lot of people who live in condos. And, you know, so I think we got to start speaking with a bigger voice, which is the reason why I'm doing these shows, because I would like to introduce them to candidates like you who are going to be working for them. And I, I appreciate the opportunity. And as I indicated, you know, I, I really am seriously interested if, if I'm elected to office, um, if a bill is not introduced, this year to, to, to extend the uh, compliance deadlines to get a bill like that introduced. Do you, do you think a bill like that is being, is it being discussed right now at the city council? Yeah, it is. And, you know, um, and I, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we do have um, uh, a council member, uh, uh, Calvin Say's ear, uh, and he was very supportive when he was in the uh, state legislature as well. So he, he understands. And so, you know, I'm very grateful that He's on the budget committee because it's not like we have to, uh, uh, you know, re-educate him because he already knows what the issues are, and you know, so so it 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 was um, um, uh, it was a very I think it was a very positive uh, experience when we testified, and I think he's open, you know, to pushing it out some way. It's just a matter of how how we fund it. I think is is the issue that's left to right. be determined. And of course, you know, when I was on the council, uh, as we were considering the fire safety issue, uh, a critical uh, player or stakeholder, of course, was the, the, the mayor's office, the city administration. And so if I'm elected to the council, one of the first uh, issues that I will bring up with, with the mayor is, is my concern about the, the impact of our fire safety ordinance on our condominiums to try to get the mayor, mayor's take on that and to see if he'd be willing to work together with the council to make further amendments to our fire safety ordinance. The original ordinance was, as you mentioned, originally advocated for by the Caldwell administration. Right. They were the impetus and they really pushed it. But at the end of the day, we finally got them on board, you know, in regards to the amendments that we made that made the, uh, the legislation or the ordinance more balanced. And so the mayor's office, his administration, it's also gonna be a key player in regards to coming up with fashioning solutions to the kinds of concerns that we've just discussed. So I just want to tell you that as a council member, I, I plan to meet with the mayor. I would meet with the mayor and raise the condo issue as one of the significant issues that the city needs to tackle in the future. Okay, well, that's good to hear. And, you know, Douglas Brewer, who was head of Douglas Engineering, who's one of the licensed professionals, he he was saying that he thinks that, you know, the, the framework is still in the ordinance, you know, he to, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, move forward with one of the purposes is to make the building safe. And he, he thinks that that is, I mean, he, and he, he said point blank, he says, you don't need fire sprinklers to make the building safe from fire. There are other things. And, and he went through a whole list of them. And he was saying, so, so, so to say that the, the installation of fire sprinklers is a be all and the end all is not true. There are other ways to make buildings safe and that don't, you know, don't require the, the installation of fire sprinklers. And, you know, so that's why he thinks that the bill is still workable if we have an alternative. In other words, you know, not to mandate uh, the, the, the sprinklers, but to allow other ways to make the building safe. And I think, I don't think the, the buildings disagree. And I don't think any of the viewers who are listening disagree. They, they want their buildings to be safe. And I think they're willing to spend the money to make the building safe, except that, you know, it, most of them can't do fire sprinklers, especially not in the time frame that the ordinance gives them. If you give us 20, 30 years, that gives us time to build up a reserve. I mean, but you, you tell us that it's got to be done in 10 years. It's not going to happen. And, you know, and, 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 and I, I think, you know, hearing that you're willing to work with us, sure. I mean, to me, that is a very positive thing to hear. And so I'm very glad that you were here, you know, as my first guest in my series of you know, interviewing candidates. And uh, we've run out of time. And uh, so I wish you luck in your campaign. Hey, thank you. And, um, and, uh, and, I'm, and I wanna thank you for being on, on, on my show today. 
Well, I appreciate the opportunity. You know, I guess I've enjoyed dialoguing with you so much about this issue or just having this very important discussion. The time went by so quickly. I can't believe, and there was no commercial interruption as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> but no, thank you so much. And I wish you my best. And I look forward to uh, maintaining a positive working relationship with you and the, the representatives of the condo associations in my district and throughout the island. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here. And for the, uh, for, uh, uh, the people who are listening, thank you for joining me. And uh, the, 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 the next uh, episode, I'm going to have another candidate. And hopefully it will be for, uh, for, for uh, uh, Council District 6, who is Carol. Uh, right now, it's Council Member Carol Fukunaga, who is term limited. So there's a bunch of people who are running for that seat in, in this year's election. So please tune in and get to meet your candidates. Because if, if you really care about what's going to happen to your building, you got to be best friends with your elected officials. Thank you for joining me for this program. Uh, aloha and mahalo.